So after our last episode, we set out to ask people about the deepest things we're all searching for. But that's not exactly how things turned out for us. The plan was to go to Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, and the Grand Tetons to interview people out on the trail. We got our car all tuned up, we even got a new battery, we looked up all the best hiking spots, and we even printed out little beautiful cards to pass out to people. But the trip really turned out to be one giant lesson on living in the present moment. I think it all started when we decided it was a good idea to go backcountry camping at dusk in the Badlands after driving 14 hours to get there. <laughs> It's crazy. You really do like, you feel like you're on like a different planet. Check out the sun, not that way. What are we doing? Go, uh, maybe do an impromptu sort of night of camping in the Badlands. I saw a sign that said, beware of rattlesnakes. And it's almost dark out, we decided to go for a hike. How's it going? Pretty good. Get up here before nightfall, total darkness, and throw up a tent. And hopefully not get bit by a rattlesnake in the meantime. Woke up this morning in the Badlands and hiked it back to our car, and uh, our battery was dead or something was wrong, our car wasn't starting. Well, that's the hood up. We're hoping this dude can help us out. And so a guy was lucky enough to be pulling up, jumped us, we got to this uh, visitor center. We went to uh, a couple other places in the next town. Just enough to get into the Honda dealership here in Rapid City, South Dakota. They fixed us up with a new battery and now we're back on the road. So we hope that the battery issues that we had in the Badlands were the last car troubles that we were to deal with for the whole trip. But they definitely were not. We have arrived in Glacier National Park and it's beautiful for what we can see. It's a little foggy, it's a little smoky, I should say. We're having some fires in the park and uh, everything's pretty much smoke, smoked out. Our second morning in Glacier started with our car making a terrible screeching noise. So we drove outside the park to find a service center and luckily we found another Honda dealership. And when we got there, our car, of course, magically stops making the noise and a mechanic couldn't find anything wrong with it. So we drove back into the park two hours to the more remote side to find a campground. Um, but unfortunately, it was closed due to bear activity. And meanwhile, the car started making the noise again. So that night, we actually ended up camping outside of the park, which turned out to be really nice. But the next morning, our car troubles got worse when we noticed that smoke was pouring out of the hood of the car. It started smoking in a bad way. So, we found what could be a repair shop. So at this point, we were only about 20 miles south of Canada with no cell service, and the nearest place to fix our car was that same Honda dealership, hours away back through the park. Luckily, we were next to a little cafe, and we were able to use the waitress's cell phone to call the local mechanic, Mr. Randy Feathers. Randy was able to come down, take a look at our car, and diagnose the problem right away, but he didn't have the parts to fix it. And so we took a chance on driving on it to continue our journey and make it to that same Honda dealership the next morning when we set up an appointment. But 20 minutes later, we drove into the park and our car broke down for real. Yeah, our serpentine belt snapped, the engine started overheating. Uh, luckily, we were right next to the Many Glacier Hotel and I was able to pull it safely off to the side of the road. Even though we were stranded at a hotel, it was not as easy as we thought to get a tow truck. Uh, there was no cell phone service, there was no internet access, and it was Labor Day. The only way to communicate with the outside world was through a payphone and phone cards. And after literally being on hold for hours, we were unable to reach our 24-hour roadside assistance. So what else could we do but go on a hike? It might seem kind of strange that our first instinct in a situation like this is to go on a hike. Yeah, we could have easily stayed at the hotel bar and drowned all our car worries in a stiff drink. <laughs> but as you probably figured, we love a good hike. Nature relaxes us and it also inspires us. Yeah, there's just something we can't resist about being outdoors in the beauty of nature, even if our car is stranded on the side of the road. No car issues can keep us down. 
we said screw it and we, we were on hold for so long hoping we weren't gonna wait around for the tow truck to show up and all this stuff so we're out here having fun and then we're gonna deal with the with the busted car later so luckily we are stranded possibly the most beautiful place yeah we could not think of a better place for our car to break down things can be put on hold you don't have a chance to do this very often and we want to take advantage while we can so so we made the hike out here and man we are we are glad we did we're really glad we did plus state farm didn't so okay coming for you. here we go we got back from our hike and waited on hold for probably another hour or so only to find out that they couldn't send us a tow truck and the good thing was the hotel we were at is usually booked out a year in advance but they had one room left for us to stay and our friend Ryan, who lives in Southern Montana, generously offered to make an 11 hour round trip to come pick us up with a trailer and his dad's truck so that we could bring our car to a shop down where he lives. We never expected to take him up on that offer, but we went down to Bozeman, Montana to rent a car and we continued on our journey. So through all of this, it became abundantly clear that we had very little control over this adventure or this project. And I think really that's how life is. Yeah, we never got to interview the people that we wanted to interview. We never got to do what we set out to do, but um, there were a lot of other things that we learned along the way. We had been reading about the beauty of living in the present moment, and this was the perfect place to practice it. And this isn't about, you know, having a no regrets attitude or just being passive. It's about having peace in every situation that life presents. So in every moment in life, we have basically three options. We can be frustrated with our lack of control, we can try to wrestle life into submission, which doesn't usually work, or we can try to explore the beauty of the present moment and see what life has to offer us, even when things are unpleasant or surpass our understanding. So this can apply to any struggle in life, and for us, it directly applies to our infertility. You know, there's nothing we did to cause it, and right now I don't think there's anything we can do to actually fix it. Uh, so the only thing we can change is our response to the situation. And at times it just doesn't seem, you know, fair, which probably happens to you in your life. But we found that when we decide to live in the present moment, that's when we find uh, most peace in our life. The present moment is constantly changing, constantly renewing itself. Uh, someone once wrote that asking time to stop so you can enjoy a great moment is like asking a symphony to stop so you can enjoy your favorite note. It doesn't work that way. The symphony has to keep moving forward and has to constantly be changing in order for it to be enjoyed. Yeah, it's only in that constant renewal of the present moment that we can really find its beauty. So the rest of the trip actually went pretty well. We were able to see some beautiful views in the Grand Tetons and Yellowstone, and we were even able to photograph the Northern Lights in the Badlands on the way back home. That is until only a few hours from home, Lucian got sick. <laughs> 